Some operations feel like they are stealing time from the algorithm, while others feel like they are barely doing anything. What if we could charge each operation a fair price? Even some of them are secretly expensive. That's the idea behind the accounting method in amortized analysis. It's like giving each operation a budget. If you are just joining, this is a part of our deep dive into the amortized analysis. But don't worry, we will start fresh. In this video, we'll walk through the accounting method with a clear example and see how assigning fake costs can reveal the real performance. So what's the accounting method? Same as other amortized analysis methods, the accounting method aims to provide a more accurate analysis of the cost of a sequence of operations. By saying operation, I mean a function or a method. The idea of the accounting method is about assigning credits to each operation. By doing so, it aims at spreading out costs of the expensive operations over multiple cheaper ones. Three steps are involved in estimating the amortized cost using the accounting method, including defining a cost scheme, checking validity, and calculating the average cost per operation. Let's look at these steps one after another. The first step is to define a cost scheme. It's about assigning an amortized cost to each type of operations. Yes, there might be more than one type of operations. In this scheme that you develop, you will assign a fixed cost to each type of them to represent their time complexity. After that, you maintain a bank account that is associated with an object of that data structure. When an operation is executed, you will charge the fixed amount corresponding to its operation type. The fixed cost you assign in step one might be bigger or smaller than its actual cost. If the fixed cost is bigger, the operation is overcharged, and you will save the difference as credit in your bank account. If the fixed cost is smaller than the actual cost, that means the operation is very costly, so you will need to use the saved credits to compensate the deficit. That's the first step. As you can see, the cost scheme you design is very important for everything that follows up. The second step is to check the validity of the cost scheme you developed. So when a sequence of operations are actually executed, you will start charging each of them. Based on the scheme you developed in step one, you will charge the amortized cost of each operation corresponding to its operation type. Given an operation, if the amortized cost is bigger than the actual cost, we would say that the operation is overcharged and we store the difference as credit in the bank account. If the amortized cost is smaller, we see the operation is too expensive, so we need to withdraw the stored credits to help mitigate the deficit. In the end, you need to make sure that the total amortized costs of this sequence of operations are always bigger than or equal to the total actual cost. Otherwise, you need to go back to step one to revise your cost scheme. The third step is to calculate the average cost per operation. Same as other amortized analysis methods, it will do so by dividing the total amortized cost by the number of operations to derive the average cost. To get a better understanding of the three steps, let's go through an example together. Let's think about the operations of a stack. A stack is a linear data structure that can be thought of as a stack of plates. It will add data one on top of another into a stack. When you remove data from a stack, you will always remove the data that sits on the top first. This is known as first in, first out, and that's an important feature of stacks. It's worth noting that the push operation only adds a single element into a stack and the pop operation also removes only a single element from a stack. Beyond the two types of operations, there's one more that we wanted to discuss in this example. This operation is called multipop. It aims at removing k elements from a stack. The definition of this operation is shown up here on the screen. This operation takes two parameters, a stack and the number k. The while loop has two conditions. 
The first condition checks if the stack is empty or not. And the second condition checks whether k is bigger than 0. Underneath the while loop, this operation keeps taking advantage of the pop operation to remove elements from the stack. The k also gets decremented in every iteration of the while loop. As you can see, the multi-pop operation will remove at most the k elements from a stack. If a stack has fewer than k elements, all of them will be removed. The summary of the three operations of stacks is presented in this table. If you focus your attention on the cost column, you can see that the cost or say the time complexity of both push and pop operations are simply big O of 1. The cost of multi-pop operation is either the length of the stack or k, whichever is smaller. Based on this summary, you can tell that the worst case time complexity of stack operations is big O of n, where n represents the number of elements in a stack. However, we know that the worst case may not represent the time complexity of a sequence of stack operations accurately. Think about it. The worst case happens when you have a multipop operation whose second argument is n, where n is equal to the stack size. But it has its limit. You can only remove as many elements as you have added using the push operation. When a stack starts as empty, you can't just keep executing the multipop operation without adding any elements first. In other words, the worst case can happen for only a single time but not always over a sequence of operations. That's why the amortized analysis is needed, and that's where the accounting method can help. To apply the accounting method to this example, we need to follow the three steps strictly. The first step is about defining a cost scheme. We already know the actual cost per operation type. Both the push and pop operations take constant time to run. And the multi-pop operation takes either the same steps as the stack size or the given number k to run, whichever is smaller. It's our turn to assign a fixed amount of cost to each operation type. Considering that the two different pop operations can't remove any elements that were not added first by the push operation, so we can assign a bigger cost to the push operation first and something smaller to both of the pop operations. For example, we can assign the amortized cost of a constant number 2 to the push operation, and both zeros to the two pop operations. How does this work? We can explore that at the validity checking step. If it doesn't work, we will revise this scheme in the future. To check the validity of the scheme we just developed, we can run it against a tangible example. We will start by running a number of push operations first, like this. As we do so, we will keep track of if we are running a deficit or credit for each operation, and maintain a bank account to store all the credits. Because each push operation only takes one step to run, but we charged it two instead. So we would get the credit equal to the difference, which is one, whenever we run the push operation. After running push operations for 6 times, we will be able to accumulate 6 credits in total. After that, we will run the pop operation for one time, like this. We know that its actual cost is 1, but we didn't charge anything on it, so we would have a deficit from this operation, which means that we need to withdraw 1 credit from our bank account to pay for it. So the total credit will go from 6 to 5. Next, we will run a multi-pop operation that aims at removing 4 elements from the stack. Like this. We didn't charge anything from this operation, but its actual cost is 4. So there is a deficit of 4 that we need to use the credit from our bank account to pay for. That's why the total credit goes from 5 to 1. Next, we will run another multi-pop operation that aims at removing three elements from the stack. However, there is only one element in the stack now, so this multi-pop operation will only be able to remove one element from the stack after all. 
So the actual cost of this operation is 1. We didn't charge anything for this operation, so the deficit is 1. And it needs to be paid using the credit from our bank account. After the three pop operations, all credits have been used and the stack goes back to empty. From this example, you can see that assigning an amortized cost of 2 to the push operation and a 0 to the pop and multi-pop operations clearly works as the total credit numbers never goes below 0. Or say that the total amortized cost is always bigger than or equal to the total actual cost regardless of whether it's a pop or multi-pop operation. The number of elements that can be removed from a stack is always limited by the number of elements that were added by the push operations. Generalizing this example, it will have this. If a stack starts as an empty one, to add an arbitrary number of n elements into a stack, you will need to run the push operations for n times. The actual cost of that is the same as the element numbers, which is n. It doesn't matter how many pop or multi-pop operations you can run on this stack, they can only remove n elements in total, and the actual cost of that is also n. In combination, the total cost of a sequence of push, pop, and multi-pop operations is 2 multiplied by n. Our cost scheme says that the push operation costs 2, while the two other types of pop operations cost nothing, which makes the amortized total cost also 2 multiplied by n. As a result, we can verify that the total amortized cost is bigger than or equal to the total actual cost, so step 2 is finished. The last step, step 3, is about calculating the average cost per operation. This step asks you to divide the total amortized cost by the number of operations, given n elements that are being added and removed from a stack. You need to involve at least n plus 1 operations. Imagine n push operations and one multipop that removes every element. That's the minimum number of operations. The maximum number of operations is 2 multiplied by n. Imagine n push and n pop operations in combination. Regardless of which extreme scenario you're looking at, the time complexity per operation is always big of 1, because both cases lead to constant number of steps per operation. In other words, using the accounting method, we are able to verify that the cost per stack operation is a constant number despite that the multi-pop operation can sometimes be very expensive. In this video, we covered how to use the accounting method to conduct amortized analyses. In the next video, we will cover a different method of the amortized analysis, the potential method.